In the same way that Deus Ex Mankind Divided is the exciting, most recent iteration, Deus Ex, the original game, still shows up on top lists when I talk to my friends about their favorite PC games of all time too. It keeps coming up again and again. And the man that made Deus Ex has been in the industry for two decades, and we wanted to invite him to the stage to talk about the future of PC gaming to close us out. Please join me in welcoming a legend of the industry, Warren Spector. Okay, uh, before I get started, it's been three decades in the game business, not oh, just two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And I want to thank the PC Gamer folks for uh, letting me come, on, come out here and, and speak to all of you folks. Uh, I wish I had something to announce. You have no idea how much I wish I had something to announce. Uh, but I, I don't. So uh, what I want to talk about today is the past, present, and future of, uh, of the PC as a gaming platform. So uh, as I'm sure you all know, there was a time not so long ago uh, when it was common to hear people opining that the PC was dead as a gaming platform. Uh, frankly, I fell prey to that thinking myself. For much of my career from uh, 1989 through 2004, from Ultima 6 to Deus Ex, uh, I was a PC guy all the way. When we started working on Deus Ex in 1997, there was never a question what our target platform would be. The PC was it. But then, right after we shipped, came the request to do a PS2 version. I should have seen what was coming next. When we started working on Deus Ex Invisible War and Thief Deadly Shadows, we had new marching orders. Those games would be developed for the Xbox. The PC version was, well, I probably shouldn't say this, but the PC version was uh, kind of an afterthought, which some of you may have noticed. Um, when we started working on Disney Epic Mickey, there was never a question. We'd be a console game. We'd be a Wii exclusive, which, as a note, was a great decision. It was the right decision from a business standpoint. Um, but the bottom line on all of this, uh, publishers wanted console games. And developers like me had no choice but to go where the money was. And the money was on console. I spent several year, years in that world, many years, always secretly hoping that the PC would make a comeback. And here we are in 2016 with PC enthusiasm at a, at a fever pitch. I mean, just look at what, what you've seen today. So what changed things? Well, social media, for one, Non-gamers discovered they could play games on Facebook. Now, some of you may not like that, but it's a fact. Uh, new gamers, a whole lot of them, came along who had never touched a console controller, never even really thought about playing a game. For more traditional game fans, most of you, I suspect, social media had an impact in other ways. Uh, streaming services like Twitch gave players and fans new ways to experience games they love, or maybe that they'd end up loving. Thanks to Twitch, there are a few better ways to interact with fellow gamers than on the PC. But there are other reasons for the resurgence of interest in PC uh, as a gaming platform. Perhaps most important, the PC now offers tools like Unity and Unreal and others that allow small groups of modders and indie developers to create new content for existing games or even make the game of their dreams. The PC, then, is the only truly democratic platform open to anyone with a great idea. And clearly, there are plenty of people with great ideas out there. If you need any evidence of the vitality and originality of the indie space, look no further than Braid, Kentucky Route Zero, Undertale, Rocket League, Gone Home, The Stanley Parable, The Binding of Isaac, Limbo, Spelunky, Papers, Please, Kerbal Space Program. I mean, don't starve, countless more. Go one step further, and there's Minecraft. Now. Minecraft is unmatched by any other game or platform at grabbing the attention and stealing the time of kids and adults, as well as creating a community of players and training future game creators. Now, Minecraft, as we all know, exists on many platforms now, but it exploded on the PC. In fact, you have no idea how much damage Minecraft did to the development of Disney Epic Mickey, okay? Uh, that's a whole other story. But, what good would all of those personally meaningful, artful, unique games and all those new creators mean if they couldn't reach an audience? The PC has that problem licked too. With digital distribution systems, yeah, let me try that again. With digital distribution systems like Steam and itch.io and Humble Bundle, 
anyone with an idea can execute against that idea and reach an audience with it. Go back five years and this was simply not the case. To make a game and reach an audience, I needed money, a lot of it. I needed a big team. I needed a way of reaching an audience trained to buy software in brick and mortar stores. In other words, I needed a publisher. Now there are new ways of reaching audiences and they all look, uh, took off first on PC. And by the way, now that I've dis, uh, dissed on publishers, I'm never gonna work again, great. Um, I love you publishers. Um, <laughs> So what else makes the PC special and more relevant than ever? There are whole categories of games that simply play better on PC than anywhere else. I'm talking about RTSs, you've seen several of those today. Uh, MOBAs like League of Legends, eSports, which turn PC gaming from solo or small group activities into spectator-friendly events accessible not only online, but increasingly in mainstream media. And where better to play an MMO than on a PC? The incredible success of World of Warcraft and these other forms of gaming speaks not just to the relevance of PCs, but in some areas, the absolute dominance of the platform. Consoles are great, you know, don't get me wrong, I love consoles. They offer consistent controls and uh, typically never changing hardware specs, but, <laughs> well, you never know what's coming. Um, but those great strengths are also great weaknesses. Consoles depend on developers learning to exploit existing, mostly unchanging hardware, more effectively each year. By contrast, PCs genuinely grow in capability over time. And you know how developers are. We want to utilize every erg of power available. We know that gamers can upgrade their machines to keep pace with our games. Games that get more and more impressive, and one would hope better, all the time. PCs offer gamers and developers ever increasing power no other platform can match. Developers live for that. And gamers are the big winners when power and creativity come together. Players benefit from the PC's open-endedness in other ways as well. You just heard a little bit about this actually a minute ago. PC gamers have unparalleled capability to customize everything they want in their game from a graphical fidelity, to personalized control schemes. The PC puts gamers in charge of their experience in ways that are unique in the world of gaming. The development ga of games has always begun on PCs. Development, we, we develop on PCs. But beyond that, we're certainly not blind as developers to the resurrection of the PC as a player-facing platform, with plenty of us focusing on exclusive titles out already or on the way or at least multi-platform titles that offer rich PC experiences along with console counterparts. Games like Star Citizen, Bard's Tale 4, Civilization 6, Might and Magic 7, Overwatch, Unreal Tournament, XCOM 2, new entries in the Shadowrun and Warhammer series, uh, add-ons to World of Warcraft. Uh, and if I can be so bold, uh, I've just joined uh, a company called Other Side Entertainment, uh, and the company I work for today is putting a great deal of effort into ensuring that PC versions of Underworld Ascendant and System Shock 3 offer terrific PC gameplay. So the PC is alive and well in 2016. In fact, you could argue that things have never looked better. The future, and I mean the near future, is one of 4K displays, motion at haptic controllers, virtual reality, augmented reality, and frankly, given the ingenuity of hardware developers and game developers, things we can't even imagine today. And where is it all gonna happen first? On the PC, that's where. We live in a golden age, an age where anyone can make a game, where there's a game for everyone, where price points range from freemium to premium, and where there's a distribution method to meet just about anyone's needs. And right at the heart of these things is the good old PC. No, the great new PC, right where it belongs at the center of an ever-growing gaming ecosystem. So thanks for having me here, that's all I have to say, and here's to the great PC games yet to come.